With the new outcome-based education, there's a challenge to educators and learners on how to teach and learn mathematics in this new curriculum. Thank you very much for coming to for joining us in the project. Thank you so much, Brad. <coughs> okay, well, well uh, you, you are a well-known excellent educator. Oh, what we also like to know is that are you also a good mathematician? I would hope to think so, yeah. And, uh, I would hope that making, being a good maths educator would mean that you are a good mathematician as yes. well because to be able to bring that message across to learners and get them to think about issues you want them to think, you've got to know your mathematics. Okay. So I think the two of them goes hand in hand. You have to. You, you cannot just be a good educator okay. without knowing your mathematics. Okay. Definitely. Well, okay. Also, tell us about the the, 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 the show that you do, Common One One, that you're also a broadcaster. Yes. I'm very proud to be part of that team. It's a team of brilliant, brilliant yes. mathematicians. Okay. There's, I think there's a four or five of us at one stage were old ex-GDE examiners or okay. IB examiners. Yes. Um, the show is incredible. We, we reach an audience of the previously disadvantaged children mainly. The, funny enough, our main audience um, comes from the Popo province, oh, yeah, really? which one wouldn't expect. <laughs> every time there's a phone call, there's a Limpopo kid yeah. on the other side of the line. So what we basically do, the show is totally live, which yeah. makes you very, very nervous. Yes. I mean, you get this phone call, you've got five minutes to prepare the question, then you go on to the air. But the, it's, it's incredible, because we always get calls back from it wasn't for the show, they would have had their 85. Okay. Or they've gone up from 61 to 85. So okay. the show is making a difference, and it's a very, 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 very nice project. Okay, compared to the previous uh, results, do you think that the show has uh, improved the, the passing rate of South African students? If you listen to the kids that phone in, mm -hmm. there, there's a, quite a few of them, yes, that mm -hmm. say that, that if it wasn't for the show, they wouldn't have understood the maths as well as what they did. Mm -hmm. And I think we can claim that we are making a, a, a huge difference, putting a huge dent into the failure rate and getting those students to pass, but I would like to believe it does. Okay. Because the show goes with a book that we've written, the Maths 911 book, which is available in all CNAs. I mean, it's, we've just revamped that book, so okay. that book is available. Yes. The Mapumalanga government has bought the book for learners, and I think that Mpopo is also on, 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 on board to buy the book for the learners. Okay. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's reaching a huge audience, and we hope. And I, I would like to leave if we are making Okay, tell me the article that you just sent an original article in this book. Oh, um, yeah, that was for uh, the Learning Channel. Lisa yes. Blake, who I asked me to do an exam briefing for the learners oh, on what yes. they should know and what they can expect in the exam. Okay. So what I basically did is I took the paper and to come back to your first question, mm -hmm. having had the experience of setting exam papers and having had the experience of 20 years of teaching, you know where trends are that kids are battling with. So what I basically did in the article is I took the new exemplar papers, it's a new curriculum, it's a mm. new service, so everybody wasn't sure what was going to be in the papers. Okay. And I sort of said, okay, if I look at this and if I look at the ad in the past, these are the catches and this is what I want the students to know. Okay, you use the phrase inside the, 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 the article, go get it and do it. Uh, can you tell us more about the, the phrase that you use? I believe that if you really want to excel at mathematics, you can't be a passenger, you can't be a spectator, it's not a spectator sport. If you want to be a good mathematician, you must learn how to think. You must get on board with your teacher, and if your teacher is not good enough for you, then you get on board yourself. You get the books, and you open those books, and you get into this work, and you do it. Oh. I absolutely believe Yeah, that. still on that, okay? Uh, okay, there are teachers that are failing to, to, to excite their, their students to learn mathematics. How do you excite your students? I mean, how, how can you advise them? I mean, how do you excite your students to, to, to love mathematics? You're going to laugh at me now. <laughs> I, <laughs> I joined a private school years ago. Yes. <coughs> I don't mention their name. <coughs> but I joined the school and the government school system. And there was a lady also from the government school system, but as crazy as a bat. Yes. And also going to her clinic. So when I did educate, I went into a talk she did. Mm. And I adopted the same policy. So part of my policy is to be an absolute clown in my class. Okay. I want the kids to enjoy when they come to mathematics. It's not this rigid, rule-based mm. little recipe system that you need to learn your recipes to yeah. I want you to engage with your mathematics and mm. I want you to enjoy it. Okay. So part of my strategy is if I see my students are bored, I crack a joke or I try and make them laugh. I'm being stupid mm. at times. Okay. But I must say on the other side, I also try and get them to actually see 
that mathematics is not this big ogre. It's yeah. accessible to people. Oh. That if you think, if you train a, a learner, I strongly believe if our educators start teaching our kids how to think for themselves and how to reason with their mathematics, we'll see a difference. Okay, um, I want to talk about something. Um, there, I mean, you, you, they call you a well known as an educator, educator, a teacher's teacher, also teacher educator as well. Yes. yes. How, how, how can you uh, how can you decide good education? Let's say you're going to How can you are there any attributes of that? I think the first thing that makes you a very good, very, very good educator, if whether you're educating in training or somebody that's currently in class, is you, you get your learners to start thinking. Mm. You cannot regurgitate mm. and and um, try and get them to, to mimic what you have taught them. Yes. You've got to get them to understand yes. and to reason with their mathematics. Yes. That means careful planning. Mm -hmm. You're asking class the activities that you choose. You don't just take a textbook as a good educator and say, okay, go to page 15. Now we're going to do example 1, 2, and 3, and there's 40 sums for you to practice. That's, that, that's the thing we all were taught that way. And you'll agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I, I agree. So to get your learn thing. Okay. And for that, you need to be a very creative person to think about how do I do this, how do I get this message across in the 15 or 20 minutes that I have in the lesson. That means getting and thinking outside of your text. Okay, we've seen the curriculum change in South Africa, you know, the coming from uh, to uh, continue to OBE, outcome based education. What are the challenges that students face now, which they need to face seriously? I mean, I in think mathematics. Uh, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty. And it's, it's not just from a learner base. Yes. This is a new curriculum. There's not a lot of old material papers available. In fact, we've got two sets of new more papers that have been prepared by people that's okay. out there in the market. So the uncertainty is not only with the learners, the uncertainty is with the, with the, the, the teachers as well. Okay. Um, I think our curriculum, I personally, I like the curriculum very much. Let me get that on the table okay. straight. I love it. Okay. I love the spirit of the curriculum. I like the fact that we are trying to push a reasoning mm. attitude toward two mathematics. Mm. So getting children to think. Yes. Not recipe-based um, mathematics teaching, mathematics textbooks. So mm. if you look at the new textbooks, there's a lot of pictures, there's a lot of language. Mm. So that to me is the very, very first stum stumbling block, a challenge for both educators and for learners okay. is to come across that language. Okay. I mean, the majority of us. Myself, I'm a second language learner, ex Afrikaans, and Okay. <laughs> so I sometimes battle with the English myself. Oh, so so what about, you know, one of our previously disadvantaged communities yes. where they are in a rural school yeah, and again, this, this language intensive yes. approach to mathematics. Yeah. So I think that is, that is huge, mm -hmm. the language issue. The second thing, the spirit of the curriculum is asking to create thinkers. Okay. And the textbooks are attempting to do that. But I don't think our teachers are, that has been teaching for 25, 30 years, are really on top of yes. what it takes to get kids to think mathematically. Okay. In the past, we could get, and I was those teachers myself. Mm. I went into class, I said, we, today we're doing logs. There's your five log laws, and this is how they work. Now go and practice. Okay. I don't want to do that anymore. Yes. No, it's okay, there's the log laws. Let's see how it works. Why does it work? That way, see how it applies to various different problems. Yeah. So in one lesson, you'll be looking at simplifying logs. You'll be at equations. Etc. Et instead of doing it day by day, okay. because it's a direct application of yes. what was just learned. So I think that's the biggest for us as a teaching fraternity. And if I listen to educators out when I do workshops for them, okay. that is what they're battling with: is how do we deliver this curriculum to stick to the spirit of the curriculum? It's no more rote learning. So it's it's how you change the it's oh. change things. So mainly there's an educator problem, not a problem challenge, and there's a challenge for learners. And, and educators alike in terms of the language. Okay, what advice can you give to learners who are going to write mathematics and create mathematics right now in 2000? Get stuck and just to get the Maths 911 book. In my 911 book. And I'm not promoting, I'm not getting any royalties <laughs> out of this because the book is being printed on newspaper. It's, it's, it's going out for virtually nothing and yes. that's why we did it that way. But what's nice about the book, there's only two books on the market. And I was involved in both of them just by chance as well. Oh yeah, there's also x -Kid. The x, -Kid, exactly. x -Kid, yeah, can you a little bit go into it? We, we, oh, we were a, a, a team of authors, there was two of us, two main authors, mm. and then you get all your editors. So mm. by the end of the day, when you see your work, it looks different. Mm. But the product is still out there, and it's a very good product. It's still there. So both of those books have the full memorandum at the back yes. for the questions. They don't just have question, exercise 5.2, Question one, the answer is three. 
There's a memorandum for you to work through mm. and to see what the, what the process was that you were supposed to think to answer the question. Yes. The Maths 911 very, very closely aligned to the curriculum. I give matric learners very good advice. Yes. I would say go to the CNA and get the book, get stuck into it. I'm involved in a project here at the university called the Targeting Talent Project. Okay. And we've used the material. Mm. We've seen learners that came into us, and this was what was so shocking for me. Okay. They're in grade 12. Yeah, they were halfway through their grade 12 year. Mm. They've done grade 10, 11, and they should have done grade 12 trigonometry. Mm. The sad part is we write an entry test with them, 20% of them pass the test. And the imatric. Yes. So that means, and that was a test based on grade 10 work. Mm. Sorry, and a little bit of grade 11 work. Mm. We thought, okay, fine, let's take the maths 911 book, it's going to latch the curriculum, let's work through the grade 11 and grade 12 book in mm. five days. Mm. We wrote a post test with these kids. Yes. Their marks improved, 80% of them passed. Sure. That's with more than 40%, between 13 and 15 out of 50. So wow. the book is good, that's mm. what I'm trying to say. Okay. So if matrix really want to make sure they've got it all, they've done everything that's going to be examined, mm. there are examiners on this book's panel, mm. and get that book and work through it. Okay. Well, we've talked to uh, about a lot of things. I want to know something that's, very, uh, that's personal. Why did you choose mathematics? <laughs> no. <laughs> you would laugh. I had... I had I loved it. I my, really loved <laughs> my, what was your matric result, first tell me? My matric is all the D. Was it the same year? <laughs> exactly the same year. I had 52% for maths. Yeah. But I wrote my prelim, mm. and you won't believe it. For my prelim, I got 98%. Oh. So I thought I knew it all. Mm. Yeah. I had a brilliant maths teacher, Mr. Lipfuck. He would stand in front of that board, he would look at a problem, he would not say a word, he would start solving it, and stand back and, there we go. He developed my love for mathematics. Yes. This man was. Wow, I want to be able to do that. Then I went to university mm. and I had a professor, Meyer, that taught me mm. physics. Mm. And he would literally do the physics problem on these boards that roll. Oh. Do the problem and turn around and look at us and said, Dames and heren, is die fysica nie elegant nie? Ladies and gentlemen, mm. isn't the physics elegant? <laughs> and that, I cannot tell you, just that language he oh. used. He was brilliant. I wanted mm. to be like these people. Oh. So teachers can really influence oh, students. Oh, most definitely. If you instill love mm. for a child in the subject, mm. you, you open doors. And that child, I mean, we need good maths educators. Mm. So we need to actually show our children, mm. listen, this is a subject you can fall in love with. Okay. You can write poetry, you can write music about it. They even made movies about mathematics. So yes. it's, it's amazing. Okay. Well, thank <laughs> you very much, Chakusko, sure, for man. being part of Maths Edge. And we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank